Hey everyone, good morning. Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, October 29th, 2022. We're back for another edition of the Saturday Synopsis. What do we do here? It's all about chart reading, technical analysis. What's happening in the stock market? I'm here to show you what I've been seeing on the charts. The best way for me to get into and out of trades is by looking at the charts and seeing what the, what the patterns look like, what the support and resistance looks like, what the technical indicators are telling me. So these these videos are all about trying to help you uh, become a better trader by looking at the charts and letting the charts tell you what the market wants to do. That's the, what I've been doing for the last 30 years and it's what I do for my newsletters as well. If you're trying to make money by trading stocks, you need to understand which way a stock may or may not be going. And especially if you're trading options contracts, you really need to understand how to read a stock chart and how to figure out which way a stock may be going. That's the way we do it. That's the way I've been doing it for over 30 years now. And it's how I run the newsletters as well. So let's just jump right in, talk about what's been happening in the stock market. We had a pretty big week here. And I want to show you how to look at charts and, and, and show you what I'm seeing. So let's just jump right in as we do almost every Saturday. We like to look at the SPY first, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. In my opinion, the S&P 500 gives us the best overall view of the market as a whole. So we like to use that as our best gauge to how the market is performing. And we use the SPY because it trades just like a stock and, and it's, it's very easy to trade, it's very easy to follow, very easy to track, very easy to look at the charts. So what you'll see in front of you is for the newcomers out there, this is what I look at. This is my chart. This is my chart setup. I keep it pretty simple. This is a daily bar chart. These are called open high low close bars. These are not candlestick charts. Each one of these uh, vertical lines is one day's worth of trading and I have about two years look back period on my chart. Down here is what's called the RSI indicator. It's an overbought, oversold indicator. It's got a 14 day look back period. And it's just like a moving average of whether a stock or index is getting overbought or oversold. And, and the, the parameters are the 80 level up here and the 20 level down here. And that they, it fluctuates in between those levels. And when it gets down towards 20, that means things are getting a little oversold. And when it gets up towards 80, that means things are getting a little overbought. Up here in the top, I've got three other lines on the charts. Uh, these are moving averages. I got a 200 day simple moving average here. I've got, and it's sometimes a little hard to see. I got a blue 20 day moving average, this line here, and then a red 50 day moving average. We got a 20 day, 50 day, 200 day moving average. And, and the moving averages uh, are used by a lot of people. And those same numbers, the 20, 50, and 200 day are followed by a lot of people. So when you have enough people following the same things, the price action tends to, to do the same things at the same time. Everyone's looking at it. That's just how it works. So we, we and in addition to that, we look for patterns. You can see on my charts here, I have a lot of things marked up. You've got this long channel right here. You can see the top line and the bottom line, and you can see how the the market price action moves within the channel and we have some other channels here it looks like an inverted v and we have these these horizontal lines which are just some support and resistance levels uh, based on prior pr price action so what is happening in the market what's been going on we'll look at some of the indexes and we'll look at individual stocks as well we have third quarter earnings season has been happening and we've had some big numbers this week so i want to take you into some of those as well but we'd like to look at the overall market first so here's the spy so we've been in since january 2022 right here uh the market's been in a downtrend for basically the whole year we had a little we had a little relief from the middle of june to middle of august this little big uptrend here that has been already moved all the way back down as well and just the last two weeks or so, we've had this nice little uptrend right here. We can even draw a new channel. Let me uh, move myself over here a little bit. You can draw a new channel here, which is you connect some of the bottoms and you connect some of the tops of the most recent move. And then that is your channel right there. So we are in this new little channel here. But what, what, what happened was about two weeks ago, right here on this day this was october 13th you can see this long one bar right here let me open this up a little more you have this long one bar here where the market opened up to the downside it gapped open to the downside meaning it opened a lot lower than where it closed the day before 
pushed to the downside. And then what happened was the rest of the day, it worked its way all the way higher and closed higher on the day. That is typically from what I've seen in the 30 years being in this business, when you have a massive gap lower like that, that takes it down in the morning and then spends the rest of the day reclaiming the, the losses and actually closes higher. That is what I've seen over the years, a, a really telltale sign that, that the bottom may be in or is is really a, a good indicator that the bottom is in. So this this one day move here, right here on October 13th, was is a very telling day. And we have not, the good thing is that we have not uh, tested that low again, meaning the market has not come back down to this area again. Now we have a lot of people out there saying that, you know, this is just a, a bear market rally, another rally, and it's just going to fail at some point. It's going to come all the way back down and, and possibly even go lower than here, maybe down 340, 330, 320. But as of now, that has not happened. We've been in this nice uptrend here, which is good. I like to see that. Uh, what I also like to see, what I liked seeing is that here's the downtrending channel and the market moved up and outside of this downtrending channel. So right around here is when we had the move outside of this channel and started its new uptrending channel. I like that. That's good price action, even in the face of some bad earnings this week. And so we have the 50 day moving average right here on the SPY that the market was able to close above. Uh, yesterday, October 28th, uh, Friday. So uh, we have the next line of resistance. This line I, I, I drew probably a long time ago on the charts, which was an area of, 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 of price action that the market was, was you know, trending towards higher and lower. It started, you know, you had a lot of movement around that area. So it was right around $390 a share on the SPY. So we closed at 389 yesterday. And so 390 will be the next line of resistance possibly it may just blow right through it and keep going up inside of this channel we have up here here's the 200 day the down sloping 200 day moving average it will be the next line in the sand for the spy to get through if it wants to keep going that's around 410 dollars a share you can see right here so the market has had this nice move off the bottom uh, the last two weeks very constructive very constructive even still in the face of rising interest rates inflation COVID still out there um the markets come off a long way right the 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 s p 500 and the nasdaq which we'll look at have come both come off over 20 percent uh from you know the january highs all the way down to where we made this low here but the markets rally back so that's a good thing the last few weeks um you know i've been saying the market was in this channel uh if it was able to break out of the channel right around you know between 370 375 was was where we needed to be to get out of this channel and continue higher which is what it's done so i'm feeling pretty good about the market here i like it in the long run i'm always optimistic about the market because the market goes up in the long run it's made up of companies that are doing well that are creating profits for themselves they're selling products real products that people are paying for so you have profitable companies over the long run the market will go up sure we're going to have times of pullbacks it's inevitable but you know if you're a long-term investor i'm talking years and years and years the market will reward you over the long run so i'm feeling good about the market right here let's look at the nasdaq because that's been the weakest of the three big ones, which is the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. Um, a lot of tech earnings coming out, some of them not so good. So the NASDAQ has been weaker than the S&P 500, still has that same pattern, you know, you have the inverted V, but still kind of down here at the lows. We also had, you know, the one day move right here, uh, did rally back, has not rallied back as strongly as the S&P 500, but regardless, it has rallied back. So that's a good thing. Let's look at the Dow Jones. We'll, we'll use the DIA, the diamonds, uh, the symbol here. You can see DIA right here. Um, <clears throat> the Dow has been the strongest of the three. Look at this power move higher. Now, when we hit that low, let me see what, let me, let me check my dates here. So this move right here, that was September 30th. So here was the low. This was October 13th. So we had like a double bottom right here double bottom is when the market um, comes down low one time tests it a second time and then rallies from there so the Dow had this nice double bottom and look at this power move 
and it has actually gotten above, closed above the 200-day moving average. So the Dow, really strong Dow component, you know, 30 stocks in the Dow, doing very well, just powering higher. The S&P 500 is behind it, uh, right behind it as far as strong movement. And then the NASDAQ is in last place, but still moving up. Let's take a look at some of the stocks here. Some of these NASDAQ stocks is the reason why the, the, the tech industry has been going down. We had big earnings. Let's start with, um, let's start with Microsoft, which was the other day, um, this week had a big gap down. So here's where Microsoft closed. Um, I think this might've been Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, and closed here around 250 and then a gap lower traded all the way down to 225 so microsoft was one of the first biggies that the tech biggies that fell um still within this downtrending channel here so microsoft then uh google had their earnings as well so you can see the gap moves so here is where it closed right before earnings and then you have the gap lower big move lower here you can see the air pocket you know, air pocket is when here's where it closes one day and then it opens all the way down here the next day. So Google still on the defensive. Amazon also did not do so well. And Amazon actually fell through some support levels we previously drew. So Amazon here, this was, uh, you know, Friday. Amazon's earnings came out after the market closed Thursday, gapped open lower on Friday. So here was the line in the sand around 100 and three dollars around 102 or so low 100s where amazon tested it many times over the summer early summer and it went through it here but it actually closed above and how do we know where it closed we had that little teeny dash mark on the right side of the bar here right here a little dash mark that's where it closed for the day and closing price is very important because it'll show where the momentum is by the end of the day so it closed above the you know the, the 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 prior support here so we'll have to see what happened what happens with amazon but the big savior was apple apple had earnings after the close on uh thursday as well along with amazon and they turned it around they actually opened lower right when earnings came out but powered higher uh closed up almost 11 dollars a share yesterday friday october 28th and here's Apple. So Apple has gotten out of this inverted V nicely powered higher the last couple of days right here and is sitting right on the 200 day moving average, which is right here. So Apple helped lead things higher. We can actually go back to the one minute chart and look what happened on Thursday right after earnings came out. Let's go back to Thursday. Um, where are we here? So this is Thursday. Uh, you know, after the market closed on Thursday, you can see Apple closed right around $145. And then we had all this post earnings action right here. Actually went down to about $136. A lot of up and down. And then just finally it caught its momentum and closed around 100, just under 156. So it rallied about $20 from low to high after earnings came out. So Apple saved the day. Um, so we like to see that that's good Apple. So it, even with these tech earnings, it's keeping the NASDAQ down. But as we saw the S and P 500 and the Dow have started to move higher, which is a really good sign. Um, what other stocks, you know, Facebook symbol is meta. Uh, they didn't do so well either. So you got these huge, huge tech companies that, other than Apple have not been doing so well. You can see the air pocket here, big gap from the earnings. So, so Facebook is really, uh, having its come up and here from it's all time highs. Let's look at the monthly chart. So, you know, Facebook was trading maybe around $375, uh, you know, last fall, September of 2021, and has really, really taken a big hit here. So uh, the last time it was at $100 a share was in 2015 or so. You got to do the look back and see where it was then. So Facebook really not doing so well right now. Uh, let's talk about Twitter. Uh, that's a big topic. Finally, the deal closed uh, this week, late this week, with Elon Musk finally taking over Twitter. It is now a, a private company. It's no longer publicly traded stock. If you own shares of Twitter, you, you would have seen on Friday, yesterday, that 
the shares were not trading. And why is that? Because it's not a publicly traded company anymore. It's now private, owned by Elon Musk. So what happens to Twitter shares? What happens if you own shares of Twitter? You know, where's your money? What, what's going to happen? Ba basically, what happens now is that the shares become retired. Twitter no longer trades as a public company. And the, the buyout price was $54.20, I believe. So however, for however many shares that you had of Twitter, you will receive in cash $54.20 uh, per share. And, you know, m most of us have our shares held with a broker. So the brokers will will pay you what, you know, based on how many shares. If, if you had one share, you'll receive a, a cash payment of $54.20. And if you had 10 shares, you'll get $542, whatever it is. So don't worry. It's not like you're going to be bankrupt because Twitter doesn't trade anymore. You will get paid out the, sh the share price, $54.20 per share. So that, that really ends the the saga of Twitter as a publicly traded uh, company and no longer have to follow the stock. So it actually probably worked out pretty good for shareholders because the stock had been in, in a big downtrend for a while and Elon Musk made the, made the price pop. So, you know, you probably, depending on where you bought the stock, maybe you made some money on it, maybe you didn't. But anyway, that's the end of Twitter as far as we know it. Um, let's take a look at some other individual stocks. In our newsletter, we started to get long this week, actually. Uh, I like, As I said, I like the market action since that bottom on October 13th. The market has moved up and outside of the channel. That's giving me some confidence that the market has probably found a bottom. So we, we took some new bullish trades in our newsletters this week. We sell put options. We sell put option credit spreads. And for those of you, uh, you know, wanting to learn more about this, go to our website. This is our website, smartoptionseller.com. Along the top here are the headers. Go to the Put Selling Basics header. That's where we have our free ebook about what put selling is, how to sell put options. Why is it? Why do we love it so much? So read here and then, you know, put your name and email address. I'll send you an email with a link to download a free copy. It's all about put selling. That's what we do here. And if you want a little more information about our paid newsletters and our paid services, just hover your mouse over here. We have our two newsletters and our coaching services. These are, we're bullish. We play bullish positions and selling put options and selling put options spreads is all about, you know, more bullishly oriented trades. All right. So let's take a look at some other things, some other stocks here <clears throat> that are of interest that could help us. We looked at Microsoft. Let's look at Nike. Nike is a position that we do have on. Uh, I am more bullish than not, or at least I don't think Nike is going to keep dropping dramatically like it has been. That's one good thing about selling put options is that you don't have to predict where a stock is going. You just have to predict where the stock is not going to go. And when you do that, you can give yourself a lot of cushion for error. I can't tell you what the trade is. Would not be fair to our paying customers, but we are, we have taken a, a put selling trade on Nike. This is an incredible company. Uh, one of the best well-known brands on the planet. Uh, you know, we're taking a stab here. It's come down a long way and we're getting ready to, you know, see the pop in Nike. That's one of the trades we've taken. Uh, AMD still kind of hanging around the lows. This is a company that I talk about all the time. I love AMD, but for now I'm sitting on the sidelines. It's still in this downtrending channel. The chip stocks have gotten hit pretty hard, pretty hard. AMD, uh, Micron, Still in this long downtrending channel as well. You know, if you want to draw the lines to help you visualize more, like I said, you, you, you connect some of the tops here and then you connect some of the bottoms. It doesn't have to be exact. It just gives you a better visual of, you know, where the price action is, where it could bounce from top to bottom. This is Micron. MU is the symbol. Look at NVIDIA. Same thing with NVIDIA. Just been in this downtrend. It's been tough. The chip stocks, um, you know, been getting hit pretty hard. Intel, although had good earnings the other day, may, you know, you know, had some good movement from the bottom. But even, you know, Intel's just been in this long downtrend forever. I'm, I'm more of a fan of AMD than Intel at this point. But all the chip stocks have been getting hurt. like to see a turnaround come soon. Apple, we looked at. Oh, well, let's talk about Netflix. Netflix, another company that we just jumped into as well. Netflix had earnings recently. Uh, market liked its earnings. So 
if you were playing Netflix, $250 was the line in the sand that was holding it back for so long. You can see right here, I'm going to draw the resistance line right here. Netflix, with the pressure was building to get up through 250. All it took was some good earnings, and now it popped it up to just about $300 a share. It's trading 295 and change. So that was a nice 45 to $50 pop right here after earnings. That's a big move. So it, Netflix still has a long way to go to recapture some of some of its you know prior highs here but i think it's on its way it has gotten above the 200 day moving average which is a good sign so we, you know we took a position on netflix this week because i think there's going to be more upside from this point forward so i like i like the way netflix likes looks here um a couple other stocks we look at coca-cola and pepsi we'll look at coca-cola um a stalwart as well over time um, you know, you can't go wrong with Coca-Cola. We know Warren Buffett, big fan of Coca-Cola. Not saying that's the reason why it's gone up, but you know, if, if, if Warren Buffett is a big investor, then, you know, maybe we should think about it as well. It's just, you know, it's a slow mover. It's a slow gr grind, hire great dividend paying company. And when a company like Coca-Cola drops that dramatically, you have to really pay attention to the opportunities to buy got very oversold on the rsi uh you know buying down here was 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 a good thing to do and it's now trading sixty dollars and 76 cents so it's rallied a good you know almost seven dollars a share that's a big move rallied back that's good uh we like i like coca-cola i have some my long-term holds pepsi same thing another great dividend paying company look at it just bottom left to top right it just moving higher 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 yes it has the pullbacks but the pullbacks makes for buying opportunities i think this is an all-time high here let's take a look at the monthly chart yep pepsi just made an all-time new high how about that in the face of the worst year for stocks in a long time all year long stocks have been going down but yet pepsi making a new high just the grind higher so another great company uh, two other stocks we talk about, uh, utility companies, Con Edison, consolidated as Edison. Here's the stock ED. Um, you know, utility companies are, are slow movers as well. But when companies, utility companies get hit as hard as they do like that, you have to take notice. You have to take notice. Got oversold, made a double bottom on the RSI, and has had this nice move up since then. From you know $77, $78 all the way up to $88. Big move. We look at Southern Company, another utility company. We actually got into a, a, a play on Southern yesterday as well. Sold some put options on it. Big move down, oversold on the RSI. You can see back here when it got oversold, it bounced as well. So the RSI can be used as a you know an indicator saying things are really getting oversold. You know, just keep a watch out because a bounce could be coming could be coming pretty soon so oversold here pretty much nailed the bottom right here and then it started to go up so you know these are things that you can look for using your technical analysis I keep it pretty simple there's so many technical indicators you can use out there you know some people think the more indicators you have on the chart the better you'll be at reading charts I, I don't I disagree with that because if you have too many indicators you're not going to be able to see the chart and and some of them will be um, some of them will be offsetting each other. Some will say you should get long. Some will say you should get short. So there's too many things. So I keep it simple. Three moving averages and just using, you know, support and resistance chart patterns and the RSI. What else we have? McDonald's just, just killing it of late. Had earnings come out this week. McDonald's here, RSI once again, hitting oversold levels around 230 now it's trading to almost 275 just look at that power move higher it, it may be getting a little overbought here when you have a vertical move like that when when when, when i say vertical the stock just goes straight up gravity will take over at some point so i do see a pullback probably coming from mcdonald's it's getting a little overbought here but just a great move great company great earnings um mcdonald's doing well uh, let's see what else we have. Kellogg's and General Mills, you know, the cereal companies doing well. Kellogg's 
you know, they have earnings coming out next week, I think, but still the price action, bottom left to top right, been moving higher. Let's check the, the monthly. Um, okay, so Kellogg's all-time high was back in 2016, but still looking pretty good. General Mills, same thing, doing well. All-time high for General Mills. Symbol is GIS. Here's how it looks on the daily chart. Just, just look at this great movement. So looking at stock charts can help you gauge, you know, if a stock's ready to bounce, which way it's trending. You know, if you're just looking at fundamental data, the, you know, the sales, earnings, PE ratios, whatever, you're just looking at numbers on a piece of paper. You're not seeing how that converts to what the charts look like. So if you want to use fundamental data, I have no problem with that. You want to look at the charts as well to see which way the stock price is moving. Verizon, still a favorite of mine in the cell phone industry. Just I have not been able to pull the trigger yet. Um, you know, here's a bottom rally this week as well. Not sure if I'm ready to jump in yet. Let's see what else we have. PayPal, um, still hanging around the lows. Square, the other payment company, hanging around the lows. Nothing there yet. Costco, always a strong stock. Very expensive though. Let me see what else I could find. Uh, we look at Warren Buffett. So here's the Warren Buffett's Berkshire class of what? Berkshire Hathaway class B shares trading around just under $300 a share had a nice move. We had drawn this line in the past as area of support. And of course it bounced right off of that. So you look for areas of support and resistance bounced here. You got one, two, three, triple bottom. It did come down a little bit below it right here and here, but look at the nice bounce going back to our website uh, under our services tab. I do have a uh, report that I wrote about Warren Buffett using a different options trading strategy. The secret to buying Warren Buffett for pennies on the dollar. Another options trading strategy that I love. Uh, if you want, you can take a look at that. Um, but, you know, following Warren Buffett is not a bad thing. You can piggyback off what he does, um, buy some of his Class B shares if, if you're bullish on him and, and or look at that report that I wrote. Uh, we looked at Twitter. We looked at Meta, IBM. Big Blue doing pretty well, too. Look at that nice move higher. Uh, what other stocks here? Um, Clorox doing okay. Colgate coming off the bottoms as well. Johnson & Johnson. So the the medical stocks, pharma stocks, we got J&J, &J, Pfizer. I love the pharmacy, pharmaceutical, healthcare industry stocks. Merck, they're all doing well. Mer look at Merck. I think this is this an all time high for Merck. Let's look at the monthly all time new high for Merck. So, you know, pick your pick your stocks, pick your companies, watch the charts and you will be rewarded. Uh, you know, chart reading is just another way to help you decide when it's time to get in and out of trades. All right. So that's about it. Looking pretty good here. You know, we've had to endure this bear market since January 1st. I'm I'm pretty hopeful here that this October 13th move was the, the bottom. Um, yeah, we can have more pullbacks. I don't know if we're going to pull all the way back down to the down to the bottom here. But, you know, people are people are naysayers out there. Uh, interest rates. The Federal Reserve has their meeting next week, the last one of the year. They're probably going to raise interest rates 75 basis points again. But after that, I think they they may start holding off. We have to wait to hear for the language, whether they say um, they're 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 not going to be as aggressive anymore. Uh, if they're not going to be aggressive, then the market should go up. If they say we're still going to be really aggressive the next few meetings, then the market may pull back. But for now, you know, companies have our companies are pivoting. They're, they're learning how to deal with these new environments and they're still putting out profitable companies. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic as always for the long run, you have to endure the pullbacks from time to time, but you have to see them as, op as opportunities to get into stocks that you like. I've been buying on the way down. Just that's the way you do it. You know, for my own retirement funds, you know, nibbling on the way down, not going all in, but nibble, nibble, nibble a little bit here and there as the stocks go down and then eventually they turn around and go higher. All right. That's all for today. I hope this video has been helpful. Chart reading is what we do. Uh, please give me a thumbs up in this YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel here. Hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the video. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. I always answer. Uh, I'm, I, I try to help you out. 
And this is why I make these free videos. All right, so that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.